Good evening, wonderful parents. I have a special speaker tonight. Um, her name is Malika Green. She'll be talking to us about um, her road and transformation to gentle parenting. So I'm excited to share her story with you tonight. Um, so Malika, thank you for being here. Let us know who you are. And um, yeah, I'm so excited to hear your story tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Tina, for um, allowing me to speak. Again, I'm Malika Green. I am in South Carolina. Um, I'm the mom of a two-year-old baby boy. And so um, it has been a short journey so far, but it's been quite a journey. <laughs> yes, um, so um, parenting, like I said, it, it's been a journey. I started off um, I made the decision to um, gentle parent when he was about six weeks old. Um, I had been going through a lot of stuff, um, you know, um, and then, you know, just watching the news and the world and what was going on. I made the decision while I was myself in therapy dealing with my anger issues that I didn't want to raise another angry black man. And so in making that decision that came that it was, you know, determined that in doing so, then I couldn't raise an angry black boy. <laughs> and so it started with how I parent him and thinking about how I was raised. Um, I knew I couldn't parent him the same way that I was parented, even though, you know, I, you know, love my parents, take nothing from them. They did what they knew how to do. You know, they did their best that they could do, but um, there was just some things that I did not want to pass along to him. Um, I grew up in a household where yelling, um, spanking, punishment was okay, you know. Um, I grew up not feeling like I could express myself. Um, and then by the time that I got fed up with not being able to express myself, um, I was yelling just to get my point across. I was angry. I would That's when I would express myself. By the time I, you know, I would blow up, get angry, and start yelling. And that was the only way I knew to express myself. You know, and I didn't want and I don't want to pass that along to my son. You know, I see a lot of um, situations where the anger turns into other stuff, you know, and I know you know about, you know, how the increase of the incarceration rate is going up, you know, the increase of, I'll say it, unaliving um, because of crime, because of anger, you know, because of fear and all of that stuff. And I want to do my part and make sure that, you know, I am doing my best to parent him in a way mm -hmm. that he learns how to behave and even like respond and communicate out of love and out of respect and not out of anger and not, you know, incite more anger and violence out here. You know, I can't, say I'll eliminate it with my parenting. I just can't guarantee that. But I want to make sure that I do my best to be proactive in helping him, you know? And so um, I started gentle parenting and, you know, it started off, <laughs> I'm trying to think of when um, it started getting the most frustrated. Probably when he was, mm, when did he, he, he learned to walk right after his first birthday, probably about a month after his first birthday. And probably about a month after that, he discovered he could get into stuff, <laughs> right? <laughs> yep. And so that's when it all just was kind of like, okay, so now we have to get into, you know, how to redirect, how to guide him um, so that, you know, and so it went from there to now he's, he's two and I call him the terrific twos. And he's starting to get independent, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just like, okay, so I can't yell at him. <laughs> and telling him what to do isn't working. Like I'm, I'm having to say 10 times, like, stop, stop, stop. That's not working, right? And so I'm just like, you know, I have to find a different way. I have to do it differently because I can't pop him. And, you know, there have been, honestly, and openly admitting, there have been moments where I wanted to resort to that because I was so frustrated. Mm -hmm. But um, instead of doing that, I would take my moment, you know, um, put him in his crib. Thankfully, he's two and he still hasn't learned how to climb out yet. So <laughs> I put him in his crib and I go in my corner and we both cried out for a second. 
you know? <laughs> and then if I, you know, I'll think about how to do it differently. Um, if I can't figure it out, I'll text or call someone who's in my support system, you know, um, and they'll maybe guide me through it or let me know, you know, you can do this. Um, and that, you know, has been part of the journey is that support system. Because like I said, I wasn't raised this way. Um, and my family members are still a part of my life and they still parent the way that they were raised. You know, they still believe in that. And so um, I can't reach out to them when I'm having these moments of frustration because they're gonna tell me what to resort to their way. And I'm just like, yeah, not gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, I'll reach out to others. And then, so me and my son will have our, you know, come back together and we'll talk about it and we'll go from there. And so just having these moments, um, have been, it's very frustrating as in, because I've had to figure it out. I didn't have an example. I don't have an example of growing up of gentle parenting. So I'm having to figure it out as I go. You know, um, this is my first child. <laughs> and so <laughs> he's learning with me <laughs> and we're figuring out together. <laughs> but yeah. Um, Fortunately, too, like I said, I am gaining a support system. I'm gaining um, a support system of people who are moms who are gentle parenting, moms who will just listen to me vent, you know, moms who I can um, lean on in moments of frustration, you know. Um, and I held my ground with my parents, you know, and let them know I love y'all and I respect you. I appreciate what you did as far as raising me, but this is what I'm going to do, you know? Um, and even when he was one and they were like, you need to do this and you need to do that. I used to just ignore them. It came to the point where it was frustrating to try to parent my son and frustrating to hear them in my ear. Yep. And I was just like, one of these got to go. <laughs> <laughs> and so I made the decision to distance myself from them. And they kind of got started complaining. Like, you don't come around. He don't see us. We don't get to see him. I'm just like, well, once you accept, accept and respect my parenting style, we'll come back around. So I gradually started coming back around mm -hmm. and they are accepting that this is my way. They may not agree with it all the time, but instead of trying to tell me what to do, at least they just get quiet and let me handle things yeah. until it gets calm, you know? And so it's been getting better. But oh, that's amazing. So um, just kind of talking about that. So how have you seen like the responses change? Like as you, you know, are starting this new parenting, like what kind of things have you seen like change in them? Like any, any perspective or anything? Um, so, um, like I'll give an example, like my mom. Um, so my son, I was at her house one time and I was cooking and, you know, my son was wanting to come in the kitchen and touch the stove. Mm -hmm. And I kept saying, you got to back up out of the kitchen. You have to back out of the kitchen since you, you know, aren't wanting to stop touching the stove. You can't come in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And my, gra my grandma tells me, um, well, you just need to pop them. My mom says, that's not the way she's going to do it. And so if she's not going to pop him, then telling him that he has to leave out of the kitchen is the only other way. And then it clicked to me. I was just like, oh, okay. She's really, she really is respecting what I'm doing. Okay. <laughs> no, that's a feeling so validating to you. Now, what, um, what you probably have experienced a lot is those comments, right? How did you navigate? You said that you ignored um, those comments at first, mm -hmm. but how, looking back now, how did you change with how you were able to handle those comments and, you know, still be confident in what you're doing mm -hmm. and just kind of stand your ground with that? Yeah. Um, I will say therapy. Um, I had to, I talked to my therapist about it and she was just like, you know, you have to realize that you've switched the new role and your priority is, is being a mom first and they have to respect you in that role and accept that. And when she said that, I was like, you know what? You're right. Like I, it's my duty to, you know, stand up for my child. And if that means that I have to stand up to them, then I need to do that so that I don't further or traumatize my son any more than necessary, any more than what he's already going to do, get from life, you know? Yeah. And so, yeah. Absolutely. Wow. So good. So good. 
Um, let's see. Oh, something that uh, I wanted, I talked about on my group was timeouts today. How do you feel about timeouts? Is that a effective method for you? Have you noticed that be an effective method or, um, we're not. <laughs> so um, outside of us having our moments where we just kind of have to separate because it's going to get worse. Um, I don't do timeouts. I do time ins. You know, um, I when I realize, you know, something isn't working, he and I will both, you know, just stop, sit down. I'll give him his time. If he's having a temper tantrum, I'll give him his minute to have his temper tantrum. And I just sit and get quiet. Like I actually sit, get on the floor and sit next to him as long as he's not hitting or kicking and give him his moment, you know? And once he calms down, you know, um, we'll talk about it. That looks like it was hard for you, you know? Maybe mommy just asked you to do something that you, you like didn't quite understand, you weren't ready for it, you know? And I understand that can be frustrating, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And so we just talk through it. And then most of the time at the end, I'll offer, you know, can I get a hug? I love you. And then we move on about our day. Mm -hmm. And so how long typically would you say that that kind of like moment lasts as when you started this? Mm -hmm. And now? Oh, <laughs> when <laughs> I started it, it was, it was tough because when I started it, he was also in the, the hitting and kicking phase too. Oh yeah. yeah. And so it was first, you know, I'm moving away from you so that you're not hurting me. Right. And so he had to get used right. to that part of it. And then once he stopped, you know, realized I'm not going to let you hurt me. Mm -hmm. It got a lot shorter, you know, and now he's not even having so many of the simple tempers anymore. It's just, you know, getting to that where I can get to his level and get to his attention. And we can talk most of the time straight, you know, skipping over the simple central part. And so it's just, a, it's just a conversation. Get to the, I love you and the hugs and we're good. It's, it goes from like, let's see. Those temper tantrums were probably anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour it used to be like on and off right. because, you know, I would think he was calmed down and he'd calm down enough to where he could get back close to me, you know, but to now is maybe, maybe not even five minutes. Right. Yeah. And so that is a testament to you holding space for his emotions, right? You were letting him tamper, tantrum. It's not a scary thing. I'm sure in the beginning though, were you activated by his his big emotions or were you always mm -hmm. able to like hold space for that oh no 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 <laughs> in the <laughs> beginning i didn't even know what to, like i didn't know you know i was just like um <laughs> in the beginning i was just like what am i doing like i i i will say it was a couple of times where i was yelling like stop hitting me right mm -hmm. and then i when i realized you know i had to do the research mm -hmm. and it was just like okay so instead of yelling at him telling him quit hitting me you know just give him his space back up let him know you know you're hurting me let him know I can't let you do this right and give it time give him his space and repeat it as much as I need to until he got it right Be a broken so it was frustrating yeah yeah for sure for sure oh my gosh so good um so is there Something that you want to leave us with tonight that uh, you haven't said before, but like, what is the one parallel of wisdom that you want to give us tonight? If I may, I have two. Okay, go. <laughs> um, so first thing is um, realize that um, they're little humans. Little humans still have their a mind of their own. <laughs> and once you realize like they have this whole mind of their own, and so they may not be focused on the same thing that you're focused on. And so that may be why they're not responding the way you want them to. Mm -hmm. Once you think about it and put yourself in their shoes, it makes being able to, you know, understand and get down to their level and focus and speak to them and ask questions instead of making demands and yelling a whole lot easier to do when they're, you know, once you think about it, like they, they're younger, they're shorter, they're smaller, but they still have a mind of their own and they're thinking about something that's totally different than what you want. <laughs> and so it makes sense that they're not doing what you want them to do because they're thinking about something totally different. Sure, sure. One last okay. question. Um, how close are you in proximity when you make a request? Because a lot of parents, they will be like in other rooms and doing other mm -hmm. things. How close are you in proximity when you make a request? Um, when I first started it, I had to get down right next to him. Mm -hmm. Um, now 
I can be, and my house isn't really huge, but I can be down the hallway and he'll respond, you know, but it's not a matter of me yelling at him. Like I, it, it's almost as if he can understand, like, I'm not angry. I'm just calling you because we're in a different room. And so he responds a whole lot easier and faster now, you know, um, than when we first started, I had to get down on his level. Mm-hmm. And like, I would leave, even notice, like, um, I have a really high bed. And I would sit on the high bed and, you know, try to get him to do something. Getting off of my bed and getting on the floor next to him worked a whole lot better. Like even like I I would say, for example, like cleanup time at nighttime, it used to be, you know, I'm sitting on the bed saying, all right, clean up, clean up. It's time to clean up and wondering why you're not moving. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Like I'm doing the cleanup song. Like what? (laughs) Right. (laughs) And then it went from, okay, so let's do this together. I get down and, you know, I'm helping you put the stuff in your wagon to take to your room, right? And so now is, I can be on the bed and just say, okay, it's clean up time. And he starts moving and he could be on the, you know, it might take a couple of times for me to say it's clean up time just so, so I can get his attention, but he starts moving instead of, you know, it taking, I remember one time we had a crying session for about 30 minutes mm-hmm. before he would clean up. Mm-hmm. And now it's just a, like a matter of, you know, me saying it enough to get his attention and he starts moving. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So it, it, it is upfront work, right? It does take a lot of work and not a lot of effort from, but mm-hmm. do we save ourselves a lot of time when we, um, you know, talk to our kids and, and don't demand and ask them questions and, you know, get close to them. Mm-hmm speaking to them. I know that it's, it's, you know, not everybody's situations like that and kids are all over the place and yeah. chaotic and noisy, but if you can get to them as close as you can, mm-hmm. um, you know, and, and what I always recommend is connect with them. Mm-hmm. It's always about connection, you know, um, and what can a parent do, let's say if they, or what have you done when you start to see yourself rising, like when you start to feel yourself getting a little agitated, like what do you do to calm yourself down? Um, I'll be honest, no, I I offer him a hug. <laughs> like, you know, I'm like, I'm frustrated. Can I get a hug or do you need a <laughs> hug? Like, and that helps so much. Actually, I need a hug. And yeah. Me. <laughs> yes, I need a hug. Can, do you need a hug? <laughs> Let's hug this thing out. <laughs> no, absolutely. It's so true. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, we respond to things so differently. Like I would do like deep breathing. Um, you know, I teach like motion regulation skills where, um, you do different things like work with the senses and all that. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, it's so important to have, if, if the hug works for you, that that works. Like we've tried to do the breathing. He does not like that. He, that makes him angrier. And so I've learned to stop. Like I realized like trying to do the breathing stuff with him and trying to talk him through yep. does not work with him. I need to that's, give him his time to calm down, you know? That, um, that's, yep. So yeah. Yeah. And, and thank you for saying that because yeah, there are parents who are like, but breathing doesn't work. Like what mm-hmm. do we do? Sometimes silence is it right. Sometimes just like sitting there with them and just being there. That's all they need. Mm-hmm. That's all they need. They don't need any, any volume or any kind of talking, just sitting with them. I love the sitting with on the floor with them. I love that because Mm -hmm. that is how I learned to play with my children. And like, they love that now they Mm -hmm. love spending time with me. Like I will get requests of like, mom, come play Pokemon with me. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Like, Well, you know, that's, that's the, the mark of the work, right? Like, Mm -hmm. you know, being in tune with your child, they will want to be with you. And Mm -hmm. it's like, I want to be with you too. Like you actually enjoy them. And that's, that's, uh, that's such a good place to be. My son will, um, he comes and he wants to come sit in my lap. And if I have something in my lap, he moves it. (laughs) Take my phone, put it out the way, move my arms and sit around and sit in my lap. I'm just like, okay, we're doing this. We're doing snuggle time. All right. (laughs) Yeah. love that I love that like nope (laughs) it's my time mom (laughs) right (laughs) so good so good Malika thank you so much for talking with us tonight I hope that you got some um, pairs of wisdom and if you want to know a little bit more about gentle parenting also I do empowered parenting um talk with us is there any way that they can find you or connect with you on social media let us let us know 
So you can just find me on Facebook. Um, my name, Malika Green. Um, you can also, if you want to, um, anyone, you can email me, dreambymail at gmail.com. Um, I can respond. I respond to that pretty quickly. I check it several times a day. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want, you can put your links into Okay. Um, so we want to connect with you but thank you so much no problem thank you for having me yep have a good day you too bye bye, -bye.